Hello friends, welcome to Third Style Garage. My name is Doug. Uh, this is a channel about the restoration of old cars, fun stuff. Uh, this playlist is about the restoration of a 66 Beetle convertible named Hendrick. Dale's right over there. Dale and I are working on it. Come say hi, Dale. Oh. Uh, that way his wife can say that she saw him in the video. I'm hi. in the video! Hi, Heather. Um, today we are working on the passenger side A-pillar uh, the door threshold and where the threshold goes up in the back. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, kind of at the same time, we're working on the, the driver's side as well, but we're going to do that one off camera, so you only have to watch us work on one. Uh, would love it if you'd hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up, post a question, a comment below, particularly encouraging comments because we like to get those. Um, and if you think we're doing a bad job, um, you can post that too. That's all good. Um, all right, let's get into it. All right, so we are working on the passenger side A pillar. And as you can see, this one is in pretty rough shape. It's been uh, sandblasted and it had layers of Bondo on it. Um, we've already done repair on the inside. We got to finish up that vent cover yet. Uh, we do have a patch panel for this that we will very likely be using. This is a convertible, and the convertibles have the carpet. What's this called? Carpet, carpet, carpet rail, rail yeah. whatever it is, that goes up a radius. And so from the Merriman Beetle. From the Merriman Beetle, we have a piece that would normally go kind of like that. Um, and then, this is what oh, this is the piece that was in there. Um, so you can see the level of jankiness. Um, and then this piece came out of there. So we will either refabricate this or use this piece. We got to figure that out yet. Yeah. Um, key thing we're hoping for when we're done is that it looks good and solid, but mainly but the door lines up nicely with the outer side of the A pillar and it's nice and rigid. Um, we think that because this was a little bit on the janky side, um, that we're starting to see cracking up here. Um, do we have that on the other side, Dale, right here, too? Yeah, right here. So that's, I'm guessing that's a common problem, but we wanna fix that up while we're here and strengthen it and fix that crack. Um, new carpet rail all the way across. And then uh, we'll need to figure out what to do um, to join this to that. This was replaced by some previous owner at some point. Um, and then see what we can do to do these welds better, fill in that little triangle there, um, and then have the carpet clip or carpet rail go up that way nicely. If any of you remember from previous videos, this edge, looked quite horrible before some pretty nasty welds there and so i spent about an hour welding and deal spent about an hour grinding and um nobody but us and you if you're watching this will know that because it'll get covered up by the rocker running board um but oh that looks a whole lot better nice work deal thanks good job uh we'll know it's right when it's fixed all right, I'm going to get into it and uh, start getting rid of this carpet rail and uh, cleaning this up here and figure out how to patch that in. We'll get to it. I'll show you progress as we go. So we're getting this cleaned up. Um, the remnant of the old carpet, I still don't know what to call it, carpet clamp or whatever, has a bunch of spot welds on it. So I've ground through them with my Harbor Freight belt sander. 
get in the habit of not setting it down this way because if you reach over to pick it up while that's on the ground, it can take off while you're holding the belt part. Um, I don't recommend that. Um, for prying up um, spot welds, um, I just welded, or sorry, just took the belt sander and ground down where each of the spot welds were, doing my best to not get into the parent material. I have an old file that I ground to a point and just lightly tapping. around the edge and uh, there's a little bit of those spot welds left but I've ground through most of it so the little bit that remains is easy to kind of break off and that way protect as much of the parent material as you can and um, it's easy to clean up afterwards. prefer to drill them out they make nice little spot weld driller bits uh, the challenge with that is it leaves a hole in the parent material that you got to weld shut and cover up. so you can see how i'm going about this and uh, i'll keep going and then clean it up when we're done so we removed the original piece that was on here, cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, now we need to make some decisions on how to best move forward. And we're wrestling with that. I'm not sure what you would do, but I think what we're gonna do is weld in whoever this cut that somebody put in it. And then you'll see there are some thin spots along here and a gap along there that will weld up. There's a hole there, a hole there. Um, the rest of it is in pretty good shape. Uh, these are original spot welds, I think. Uh, and then, so we're gonna just make this all one piece with kind of a nice constant radius. Originally, I think it would have looked more like that. And this would have been a triangular insert piece that went in there. So there's this flat triangular part, and then it went in on all sides. Here's one from another spot on the car that's not in good shape, but this is approximately what that would have looked like. So factory wise, we would have seen this seam. We would have seen a seam here and we would have seen a seam there. Uh, we are leaning towards blending this in. We know it's not original looking. Uh, but we think that will be the easiest and we would be content with that. The carpet strip would go right down the top of this. We're unsure yet whether we want to fill this in and fill this in with weld and grind it smooth and just have it look kind of like this radius or whether we want to leave it and have it look like that. So I'm going to start welding this up, grinding it down. Uh, filling in this gap here and having this blend smooth as well. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, she's welded up. Uh, not pretty yet. Noticed I missed a little hole there. I am real close so you can see the prettiness or ugliness of my welds. So I'm gonna start grinding that. And then, uh, boy, I just built this up on the bottom. And then there were a whole bunch of dents there that I filled in. Um, so I'm gonna work on grinding that clean. I'm still debating in my head whether I should have cut a patch and welded that in instead. I don't know, time will tell. Just to give you a quick update on the progress. So this is ground down, it's a little warm. And uh, you can see right here, I've got a gap to fill in, a little right there, small one on the bottom. And then it's a little hard to see, but there I have a low spot right back there. So I'm going to build that up as well and then try to radius that corner in. So it's just a matter of being patient and uh, 
filling an area, doing some grinding. I've got a little bit of a low spot right there. Eventually I like to get it to a spot where uh, we feel good about it without needing Bondo. So, and we'll grind that later. And here's kind of the, what I think will be the finished project for this or product. Um, looks good, all nice and solid. Don't have any concerns about that. This radius was about the tightest I could get with my belt sander. Um, that radius there. I tried a little bit with a carbide bit to tighten that up and that was not working well. Um, we decided to leave this gap here and here and I think that looks nice. Eventually, this will have a carpet rail that goes in there. So I think that will give a little bit of that original look where there was a gap. Sorry, I lost my balance. There was a gap on all three sides. So this you won't see, we covered by carpet. This you will see. I still have a little bit of a low spot right there. So it's gonna require just a touch of Bondo. Um, but overall, particularly from this distance, that looks good. Um, we do need to, the previous owner cut that little bit of triangle out. So we're gonna start making a patch there and we gotta do some cleaning up of that weld. Um, and then we can begin moving on to the A pillar, which is gonna need a bunch of work up front. So making progress. Hey friends, we are back it's Wednesday night and I uh, forgot to videotape the start of this because we're kind of excited to put the door on today and start doing some test fitting. You can see some of the original color because we haven't sandblasted the hinge yet. Uh, but we did um, just clean these out and uh, run them across the wire brush on the bench grinder and a little lubricant and drove the pins in. There are three bolts up top, one, two, three, and three on the bottom. So right now we are working on the alignment. We really want to get those two body lines to be pretty lined up and the top to be lined up. We got this point by loosening all of the hinges and then uh, just lifting up on the bottom and tightening them up. That was our first effort. Now we are not experts at aligning doors, so this is gonna be a lot of trial and error. But one of the things we're really concerned about is how does the body line here go? And also, how does the body line there? And then at the bottom, and you can see that at the bottom, our door is way proud. Um, and so, seems like that hinge needs to go in to get the door to go that way so we're gonna we're gonna just learn how to adjust hinges and mess with this for a little while off camera and see if we can get this to the point where this side looks the way we want it the whole key to this is figuring out whether this hinge is in the right location and whether this previous patch was done well enough or whether this needs to be cut out and be replaced. So that's what we're working on. Here's our, here's our guess as to what's happening. Um, as you can tell, this part was replaced by a previous owner and needs to be cleaned up. Um, when we slide this hinge all the way over and this hinge all the way out, we get really good alignment here, but the door is kicked out too far. So we get a, a big, the door comes out and then goes down to this corner. Sorry, door comes out and goes down this corner. Hopefully you know what I mean. Um, so what we think we need to do is to slide the hinge piece that goes in here further that way to swing the bottom of the door in. Unfortunately, our hinge bolts need to go to the right further, but this half inch diameter hole, the bolt, the threads of the bolt are hitting it on the side. Um, can you see like that how 
the threaded bolt behind it needs to go farther to the right than the clearance will allow. So we're gonna try to take a, try to take a die grinder and just lengthen this hole a little bit in this hole, in that hole. Um, so that the hinge, oops, sorry, the hinge will slide further in. Now, when I work with my die grinder, I don't wanna go in too far and mess up those threads. So I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in there just to pry that threaded backing plate back a little tiny bit to give myself a little bit of room. And I'm gonna to try to elongate that. And uh, we'll see if that works. All right, so we ground out these holes. I don't know if you can recognize from before, this bolt head is farther that way, the screw head is farther that way. And uh, so this hinge has slid that way. The top hinge is as far that way as it will go. And here's the situation that we're in. Our door arch, like that seam looks great really like that. Our alignment here across there is really good. Ignore that. That's a little thing we got to fix. The problem we found now is this gap is reasonable here, maybe a little wide. And it gets tighter and tighter and tighter to the point that it's hitting somewhere. So we've got a narrow gap going to a wide gap. Hmm. I guess that's the next problem to solve. We took the door back off and took this hinge out and semi-crudely tapped this with a heavy hammer and tapped there with a heavy hammer to push this mounting surface forward just slightly. Um, it moved fairly easy and did kind of what we expected. So the bottom of the door, where's my finger? The bottom of the door moved forward, which caused the whole door to swing down. So now our door rides low there. If we lift it oh so slightly, now we're a little closer. Our curve is still good and our gap is better. So we're close all the way up and down. A little bit larger at the top than at the bottom. And we're getting tight here. That's fixable if we have to, but we'd rather not to have to modify the door here. So our next thought is we swing the door by swinging this hinge forward. We swing the door down. We're going to see if we can move this hinge forward or touch to swing it back up and maintain that gap, but get the door to ride up. Again, we don't know what we're doing. We're going to see what'll happen. Worst case, we can shim it back. All right. I'm going to be honest with you. We almost screwed up. Um, we are gonna take this hinge off and try to tap this mounting surface that way. As we took it off, we realized last time I never tightened these three bolts. So the top hinge was flapping in the breeze a bit. So all of our last measurements were off. Here's where the door actually closes now with both hinges tight. So we are, the door is a snud low our curve still looks nice and our door gap is better. It's still not an eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm a little worried that by the time we get a good coat of paint on here and a coat of paint on here and we have coats of paint on the hinges that actually grows this a little bit but this gap might not be enough. And the last thing we want is brand new paint that's rubbing. Um, 
but we're close. So what we're thinking of doing is what we originally said, but a little, a little less aggressively to try to just tap this mounting surface forward a little bit, just a little bit to raise this edge up and hopefully add just a little bit more gap there. Um, tapping the top one will, should definitely pull this up. Might not help us with our gap down there, so we may need to move both of them forward. We'll see. All right, door's coming back off. Test fit, test fit, test fit. As Dale says, more thoughts. <laughs> I think thoughts. I think I'm out loud. Um, all right, so this is hinged. We just realized, remember, that there's a crack that runs all the way from here all the way down there. And we need to fix that. Um, if I stick this pry, this, what do you call it? Pry chisel. chisel, there you go. And I pry backwards. What I want you to watch is that crack right there. I don't know if you can see that close up. I think like this position here closed up may be the original flat mounting surface. Um, so we're gonna weld this up and grind it flat and then test fit the door before we modify anything else because I think that might be our problem. Okay, we're done welding it and it came out really well. So we ran, we ran into, a, I think there's a little bit of the brass solder or what, copper or whatever it is, I think it's brass. Um, in this joint in here that messed with my welding a touch, but other than that, there's a crack that went down here, all the way down there, all the way down to there. So feeling really good about that. We're gonna test fit the door again and see how she looks. Here we go. Mm-hmm. I'll screw up my car. Remember, we're not, we're just two guys with a car. <laughs> not a welder. My it's, guy with a welder. It's the VWOA approved way of doing this. All right, we need to move that thing exactly 25 thousandths of an inch. for the 35th time. We're gonna wrap up, it's the end of a Wednesday night for us. Um, not sure how we're feeling about tonight. Um, overall, that's close, the door is a touch low, our gap is decent, alignment of the bottom is good, that gap is good up until about there, and all of a sudden it gets really tight. In fact, I think this might be hitting there, it's definitely solidly hitting there to the point where the door springs back. Um, so we don't know what to do. We don't know if the solution is to shim it out and spread all of the, you know, the gaps out. Uh, we don't have a couple layers of primer and paint on it yet. That will affect things. We don't know if the car is kind of sagging because it's a convertible. Um, so I think this week we're going to be doing some, uh, just some research and learning and trying to see what we can find to figure out what our next step is to get the door to fit. But right now it's fitting pretty good there up until there. This stretch is not. Hey friends, Doug and Dale, say hi. Hello. It's Wednesday night. We're back at it again. We've had a week to, uh, post some questions and do a little research on the Samba and some Facebook pages. And uh, as you can see, the beetle has moved. We've got doors on both sides and we are trying to figure out the back end of the car and the front end of the car. Um, so what we did is put the door on, um, adjusted it, not real closely, but basically just bolted it on and measured the gap. We've got 160 thousandths there, 140 thousandths there, 120 thousandths. Um, I apologize that it's not a metric to the Volkswagen. 
The top here is a little harder to measure. We're 90 thou, 115, 165, and then 30, 215. We got a wide gap here, but that's where that joint is, and then 140. Um, so that's our gaps there. Um, this side, we are at zero. We have an interference fit at the top. And then you can see it grow down the side, 60, 120, I think if I read Dale's handwriting, 140. And then we're a little tight on the bottom, 80, 130, 145. All right, so here's our plan for tonight. Um, we're trying to figure out how much of the back end of the car can flex, how much of the front end of the car can flex. Seems like the both ends of the car were in an accident at some point in its life, and we don't know anything about the repair work that was done. Um, so we're gonna do a couple things to learn tonight, just to see, hopefully you'll find this interesting too. We have the car on uh, uh, blocks on the front, and then right down about here, there's a four by four that runs underneath it that's on casters. Um, it's not on the original suspension, the A beam in the front, the front beam. So it's called, right? Front yeah, beam, front beam. Yeah. the front beam. Um, so we're going to jack it up in the middle and both sides, take the supports out of the back and then remeasure and just see how much this thing flexes under its own weight, completely empty. No interior, no engine, no gas tank, no glass, no top, just for learning's sake. And then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the front beam back on and put the rear axle back in, set it down on rubber, and then take a third measurement. We just wanna know how much adjustment does this thing naturally have? Can we get close to maybe where, how it will be sitting when it's done and reassembled. Um, and what does that do to gaps? Do they not move at all? If so, that's nice, it's fairly rigid, then we know we might need to make some structural changes, particularly to the passenger side, driver's side over there, uh, because we have that interference fit at the top. Um, all right, so we're gonna jack this thing up and then take new measurements. We'll show you what we find out. Okay, so the Beetle is jacked up. Uh, right at the midpoint here, same on the other side, and there is, uh, it's pretty close to balanced. Um, and interesting, significantly larger gap, particularly at the back end of the car, not as much moving at the front end, although there's a little bit. So we're going to lower it back down and put the rubber back on and take more measurements, and we'll show you the results. All right, so we are getting ready to, or we are putting the front beam in, and all of these four holes are packed full of sand from sandblasting and grime and grease that's come in the back. And so we are slowly flushing it with PB blaster, blowing it out with the air gun, and then carefully running a tap in and out. Dale's on the last one. First two on this side were awful. And then I'm chasing threads with a die. Uh, we bought a affordable kit off of Amazon so that we can clean threads. And man, I think this is what happened with, you gotta do with old bolts and with sandblasting, but it is slowing down progress. And Dale just <laughs> dropped the tap. Cut that out. Way to go, Dale. There's no way I'm editing this out. It's blackmail. Get back to work. There we Hello, friends. It's back to Wednesday night. Hi, Dale. Got the lucky shirt. Lucky shirt. <laughs> we need a lucky shirt. We need a lucky shirt. <laughs> okay, she's back on rubber. And uh, here's our task for tonight, or at least what we're working on. So we've taken three measurements on the door gap. Um, the first one, the underlined one, was it sitting on a jack stand on the front a four by four across the frame rail. The second measurement in parentheses was when we jacked it up in the middle to see if it would flex open. Um, and then the third measurement in black is what we measured back now sitting on rubber um, on the ground 
on its suspension. Obviously, no engine in. Uh, we did, in order to put it on the rubber, we needed to put the transmission in. And so, no interior, not sitting the way it will, but back to that. What we learned is sitting on the jack stands versus sitting on the rubber is virtually not much of a difference. 60 thousandths to 55. Um, sorry, 60 thousandths to 60 thousandths, 110 to 110, 140 to 145, 145 to 140, 130 to 130, 85 to 80 thousandths. Uh, that is not, I was just measuring with a caliper. So my, my uh, standard of air or whatever, I can't think of the right word, is probably five to 10 thousandths. What was interesting is when we jacked it up in the middle, kind of made a teeter-totter out of the car, things did open up. This went from 80 thousandths to, to 100, so that opened up 20 thousandths. The middle went from 130 to 175, so that opened up 45 thousandths. The top went from 145 to 225, so that opened up 80 thousandths. Um, if I'm doing my math right. Um, so you can definitely see that when the car was jacked right here, that that joint there opened up a bit. And we saw same thing on a similar degree on the front as well, not quite as much. Um, and similarly to the other side. So the last step we're gonna do, because a lot of people recommended this on Facebook, is we're going to turn a light on. Uh, we're gonna tighten these down to see if that makes any difference. Uh, if tightening the front down will pull the nose forward. Uh, so I've got some clamps. We're going to just clamp this thing down all the way till this front bracket is tight up against the frame rail and it can't pull it down any tighter and we will double check that measurement and see if it changed at all. All right, clamps on the front, pulling the front down as tight as we can and our, our dimensions did not really change at all. In fact, they actually closed down about 10 thousandths of an inch, which makes no sense to me and really 10 thousandths of an inch is not much. So, you know, what a lot of people have advised online is with a convertible, after paint is done, there's some adjustment of the body gaps you can do by shimming or unshimming. These mounts, mounts to the frame right there and there, as well as the body mounts here. Um, I think our task is gonna be tonight to figure out what do we need to do to get a nice even gap here with the body sitting the way that it is. And our next step, I think, is to pull up some stools and scratch our bald heads. I think this episode's getting a little bit on the long side. So we're going to wrap this one up. We think we have a plan. We are going to try to make a cut in the bottom of the car here, inside and outside. And we are going to try to pull the whole nose forward and rotate it at the same time. That will move the bottom hinge forward, also up just a touch, helping our gap back here grow. This hinge will also move forward and up just a touch. It will grow even more than there, which will allow this gap to grow a touch. We'll shim it here, which should give us a gap in there. That's just a theory. Next episode, we're gonna try to make it happen. Um, Wish us luck. Stay tuned. We'll see you next episode. Thanks for following along on this crazy journey. Have a good week, folks.